Judges chapter 5, one of many songs in the Bible. Song of Moses, Song of Deborah and Barak. There's 150 songs in your Bible, the book of Psalms. Then sang Deborah and Barak, the son of Abinam, on, on that day, saying, and this, this is following chapter 4, which we've already done. You can find the video, the audio. Praise ye the Lord. That's a great way to start off with song. Praise ye the Lord for the avenging, that's the first time that word shows up, of Israel. When the people willingly offer themselves. Wow, willingly. They gave. Was no force at all. Oh, if you can find people in the church that would do that. The church would go far, but Hear, O ye kings, give ear, because you better listen, O ye princes, government officials. I, even I, will sing unto the Lord. I will sing praise to the Lord God of Israel. So hear up, all you rulers. Hear up, world. <clears throat> We're going to sing praise to God of Israel. Lord, when thou wentest up, of Seir. Now we're going to look at the second advent here. When thou marchest out of the field of Edom. You can find it on the map. Old Testament map of Eden. Uh, Moab. The earth trembled. Second advent. And the heavens dropped. The clouds also dropped water. Amos says, woe unto you for that cloudy day. Not a day of good. It's the day, it's the day of the Lord's wrath. The mountains melted. And that, that's almost going to be literal. When Jesus Christ comes, this earth is going to change. And the Bible looks like the only high place ever there's going to be in the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ is Jerusalem. And the Bible speaks about Carmel. I think it's Carmel that's going to split into two. From before the Lord. So when Lord Jesus Christ comes, the earth that's under a curse is going to go into a panic. Now before we continue further, let's go to Revelation chapter 19 and see what's going on. Revelation chapter 19. Let's look at the second advent of Jesus Christ. As the Bible relates. He's coming. Now, let this not be confused with the rapture. At the second coming of Jesus Christ, he's going to land on earth again. He's coming back, but not as a baby. He's coming as a lion. Fierce. Of the tribe of Judah. When he comes for the church, the rapture, he's, he's go we're going to meet the saints. The Christians are going to meet in the airs at the clouds. There will be a church gathering of no lost people in the clouds. And once we gather with those that are alive and those that are dead, then we're going to go further to heaven and meet Jesus in the air. He's not coming down to the rapture. In chapter 19, Revelation verse 11, I saw heaven open. And behold, a white horse. He that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. Capital L, capital T. And in righteousness, funny because I had a guy read to, to me on a perverted Bible that removed righteousness. He does judge and make war. Righteousness is Jesus Christ, is God. His eyes were as a flame of fire, angry. And on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. No man on the earth knows his name. There may be, it looks like you're going to get to the point on the earth, there's no Bible. And no one knows who Jesus is. Yeah, when he comes, who's that? They're going to realize it's God. And he, had, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name, when well, I thought they didn't know his name, his name is called the Word of God. Then you run back to John 1, 1, 1 John 5, 7. 
which has been changed in Bibles or removed in modern Bibles totally. See, we know him as the word of God, John 1.1. 1, 1. To the world, they don't know who he is. Though John 1.1 1, 1 says plainly who that is. I want that modern Bible that we read changed and called the word of the God. That'd be something to check out. And then the armies has us, Joel chapter 2, verse 15. Out of his mouth goes forth a sharp sword. Scripture with scripture, that's the word of God. Out of the word of God comes the word of God. Now, isn't that interesting? As the power in Genesis 1, let there be, boom. Jesus is going to say, my enemies, gone. <laughs> and they're gone. And with it, he should smite the nations, goat nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of Almighty God. And he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That's Jesus Christ coming. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying unto the fowl, the birds of the air, in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. Here's a dinner by God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond. Both slow and great. That's after the millennium. Because I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth. I mean, this, and I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and the armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse. As Jesus Christ is coming. It's a war. This is a world war. Of many world wars. Against Jesus Christ. And we're behind him. We go into the millennium. That's the second. That's when Jesus Christ comes with us falling. What happens? He picks up the Jews and sail Petra. If that's the city where they're at, he's going to go up the King's Highway. He's going to follow Israel as they went into the Promised Land. He's going to cross where Joshua crossed. Then he's going to go in places Jericho, Ai. He's going to win battles, even though in Ai, Joshua lost that battle. Jesus won't lose his battle. You know, it's funny because, because they went to a window and gathered Rahab. Let's look at Joel chapter 2 about Jericho. Something interesting. Joel chapter 2 is the second advent and it's speaking about us. I don't care what Schofield's note says. I can't read it because I crossed it all off. And verse 2, verse 1, the start verse. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, that's Jerusalem, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain, Jerusalem. You guys told me today, they're teaching today that that temple was not where they said it was. And yet, they said today, the news, they found the city of David, and the headlines are is exactly where the Bible says it was. Quite interesting, isn't it? Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. Isn't that what we just read in, Ju in uh, Judges? The day the Lord cometh, for is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess. A day of clouds, we read that. A thick darkness as the morning spreads upon the mountain mountains. A great people is strong. There has not been ever the light. It's us. That's us. Neither shall be any more after it. Neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. There's going to be no one like the bride of Jesus Christ ever. How's that? We're one of the kind unique. A fire, a fire devours before them, Revelation chapter 19. And behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them. A land that was not cursed. 
before we even touch the ground that Jesus already touches, the land has already been changed before the army. Before them, behind them, a desolate wilderness. Yea, nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them as the appearance of horses, Revelation 19. And as horsemen shows how they run. We're not going to... Uh, we're not going to be uh, falling down. We're not going to be huffing and puffing. We're going to be full strength. We're going to be ready to go. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they lead. Like the noise of flame of fire that devours the stubble. Almost like a forest fire. As strong people set in battle. Way. That's us. Before their face the people sh shall be much pained. All faces shall be all faces shall gather blackness. It's that fire. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall. Singular. Like men of war. That play back something in Jericho. I mean, yeah, Jericho. And they shall march everyone on his ways. And they shall not break their ranks. They're united. Neither shall one thrust another. We're not gonna kill each other. We're not gonna stab each other in the back. They shall walk everyone in his own path. Oh, look at that. There'll be a time that Christians walk the path that God's given them. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. Ooh, look at that. No Tylenol. No aid station. No first aid. We'll get stabbed and we'll take that thing out of here. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. Sound like a particular house and wall. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. That's what they did with, with Rahab. The scarlet red. The earth shall quake, judges, before them. The heavens shall tremble, judges. The sun and moon shall be dark. You find that at the end of every seventh plague. The trumpets, the vials, the seals. The sun and moon go dark, shall be dark. And the stars withdraw their shining. That's the end of every seven plague. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. For his camp is very great. How's that for Christians? For he is strong that executes his W-O-R-D. Unless you've got another Bible that says water. For the day of the Lord. You don't want the day of the Lord. Amos warns you about the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is when Jesus Christ comes back angry with his armies. Great and very terrible. And who can abide it? Israel and the sheep nations. That's it. The goat nations go off. So Judges 5, verse 5 again, the mountains melted before the Lord. Even that Sinai before the Lord God of Israel. See, he's going to be at Sinai again. He's going to follow the path that Israel followed to the promised land. That's why Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua is so important. It's yet, yeah, it's historical, and yet it's prophesied it's going to happen. Wouldn't it be great, now, and this is actually, you know, but wouldn't it be great is when the Lord brings us into to the Holy Land. I don't need a Holy Land today. Jesus Christ is going to bring me to the Holy Land. Wouldn't it be great if you say, you see that place over there, folks, that they're coming? That's where the earth opened up and swallowed. You see that place over there? That's where that's where I, the rock, started giving Israel war. You see that place over there? That's where the manna first. Wouldn't that be interesting on the way? Over here is where Aaron was dead and buried. That's, he's not there no more. Here is where Moses and, and Satan met with Michael the archangel at their battle. And this is the steps that Israel took. And here's the same place that Joshua. Wouldn't that be interesting if the Lord did that? And if he did do that, he when we pick up Israel and bring them into their land as Joshua did, wouldn't it be great that Jesus Christ is teaching Israel the history of their nation as the Bible says? Wouldn't that be great? It seems to me, if I read the Bible, God is in historic details, isn't he? And if Jesus Christ were to play back the whole history of the nation of Israel as recorded in the Bible, wouldn't those Jews say, hey, that's the one? I don't, that's, that's possible. 
Verse 6, in the days of Shamgar, Judges 3.31, the son of Anna, in the days of Jael, the highways were unoccupied, and the travelers walked through byways. That's the first and last time that word shows up. The inhabitants of the village ceased. They ceased in Israel. Why? Why is 6 and 7, they have been dispersed, and the Antichrist is trying to kill them, and God, chapter 12 of Revelation, has given them a place to go. They are not in their land. How's that? The Antichrist is in Jerusalem. He is seated in the holy place, proclaiming to be God, and everybody's receiving the mark and loving him. The Jews are on escape. They are running. I, Deborah, rose that I rose a mother in Israel. They chose new gods. That's kind of interesting because the Antichrist has never been such an Antichrist before. Though there are types in the Bible of Antichrist, but is there ever such a person, a man, that has ever been on this earth to be like the Antichrist? Never. When he does his magic tricks, they're not magic. They are his real powers. And the world's going to fall for that. Then was war in the gates. Was there a shield or spear even among 40,000 of Israel? There's no weapons. So you may fight for your arm rights. You may say you got a constitution right to bear arms. The Bible says you're not going to have it. You're fighting in vain. Put away your guns and, and preach the gospel, will you? The Bible says that there's going to be taxation in the Antichrist and there's going to be gun control. So put away all that nonsense and preach the gospel. Get people saved so they don't have to go through this mess if the Lord's coming with a rapture soon. Adolf Hitler and the Nazis of taking away your weapons is coming to pass. And that's quite interesting because today, because if you see pictures, live pictures of the camera, which I have been seeing for the last two weeks, the, the police in Israel are armed like a SWAT team. Man, they're carrying guns in their hands. Huh? Riot. Riot gear. They're carrying guns in their hands. They got uh, rifles, shoulders around them. They got uh, uh, belts around them with weapons. It looks like they're military. Yeah. And God says... And God says in Israel that they're not going to have any spears. They're not going to have any. And they're holding, they're holding, uh, they have breastplates on and they have shields and they yep. have, they're, they look like they're SWAT team. And the Antichrist is going to remove all that. He has to. Or they'll be working for them. That too. But for the people, gun control is gone. You must, just get, you must just come to the Bible, get the realization, hey, get rid of your gun controls. Maybe the fact is, if we get rid of our gun controls, maybe the Antichrist will come sooner and Jesus Christ will have to come forth a lot quicker. Yeah. How's that? You realize it was a day of taxation when, when Jesus was born and had Joseph protest and go to tea parties. Maybe Jesus would never been born. We were supposed to be born and it would have been put off. How's that? My heart is toward the governors of Israel. They offered themselves willingly among the people. Bless ye the Lord. They're giving themselves to God. Speak ye that ride on white asses. That's weird because in Joel and Revelation says horses. What do you say about that? Well, this is about the Jews. Maybe the Jews are going to be white asses. White asses is, is a symbol of king. Jesus rode into Jerusalem on an ass. I would assume it would have been a white ass. Uh, David said, okay, you're going to put Solomon as the ruler of the nation? Let him ride upon my ass. And I believe Mordecai was put on an ass in March to the city. Yeah. So it would have been a white ass. There it is. That's royalty. Jesus comes back on a white horse. So what's all your Cinderella stories with the prince? What's he come on? He comes on a white horse. And who, he comes for a woman. Okay, wait, guys, where is that? Wait, verse 11. They that are delivered from the noise of archers 
There's a man in, in the Bible. He was a, he's an archer in Genesis. And he begins Babylon. Esau was an archer. And it took the trouble. In places drawing water. Drawing. That's the first place drawing shows up. So what's a lot of your artwork? Is it water? Here's your snipers in the Bible, verse 11. <laughs> They're snipers. They shall, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts. By the way, drawing also only shows up in John 6, 19, too. That word drawing, only other place it shows up is John 6, 19. And that would be the reference to uh, the bread. Let's see that, John 6, 19. Let's just check that out. John 16... Now 6 9 19 6 19 John 6 19 this is the only other place for drawing So John 6 we don't want John 6 66 but John 6 19 So when they had rolled about five or twenty or thirty furlongs Forlorns. They see Jesus walking on the sea and drawing nigh on well, Look at that drawing as a reference to water. That's Jesus coming. To them, they're in a boat and there's a storm in the middle of the night. So, again, where do you get all these water drawings by artists? From well, McCain, James 16, 11, Bible. We're dealing with a guy today. He's got a modern Bible. You can't find this stuff in your, your modern Bibles. It's been changed. I guarantee that word draw has probably been changed. So a lot of times you're going down a road, right? And here comes a river. And you got a problem. You say, well, what's the problem? I got to draw a bridge. Over the water. Warning, draw bridge. I'm going to find an interesting study about these first time words when they show up. I only say that because my daughter's an artist. And there they shall rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. They're getting prepared. They want to do right when God shows up. They do not want to be caught off guard. You know the church is rehearsed today? First skip. For a play which will not honor God even the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of the villages of Israel then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gates that's where you come in and out of the cities awake first time that word shows up awake <laughs> second time it shows up Deborah awake <laughs> awake get up Israel's asleep. The mother of Israel is asleep. You want to play wrong with that mother? As Deborah? Second Advent? Let's go to Revelation chapter 12. Scripture with Scripture. Again, I just hate to say it. Modern Bibles ruins. Revelation chapter 12, verse oh, 1. Mother of Israel, she said. And this one right now, the Lord just showed me. This is not in my notes. Great when you study. You can't do that in the modern Bible either. What was it? What was that? It said? Do your best. Do your best in the modern Bible said. If I did my best, you wouldn't find these. The scripture references. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. A woman. Is a woman a mother? Well, let's see. Clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Genesis 33, 9 says that's Israel. And she being with child, Mother Deborah, oh, travailing birth and pain to be delivered. Verse 5, we don't, we're not interested in saying 
And she brought forth a man child, and we don't know who this child is, who was a rule all nation with a rod of iron. That's kind of interesting. Scripture, scripture says that's Jesus. But Jesus is not going to be born again. Her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. <laughs> it's a Jewish child, let's say that. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared of God. And there she would feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days, 42 months. So that's kind of an interesting number with the Antichrist in the tribulation period, seven years. Verse 13, and when the dragon saw that he was cast out, out into the earth, he persecuted a woman, Antichrist chasing Israel, which brought forth a man child. And to the woman was given two wings of a great eagle. Matthew 24, 20, Mark 13, 18, Jesus says, pray that your flight be not in the winter because the airlines are going to be closed. Pray to be not in the Sabbath because you're not going to have business on the Sabbath, which shows you the law is coming back. That she might fly into the wilderness onto a place where she's nourished for a time, one, times, two, and half a time, three and a half years, from the face of the serpent. Now watch this. Now the Lord just showed me now. This is not in my nose. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood. There's that water drawing. After the woman, in, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood, like the disciples in that boat. Isn't that interesting? And the earth helped the woman. The earth opened her mouth. That's twice the earth opens the mouth. And swallow up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. That's number 16. That's a historical reference for Jew. Didn't the earth open up some other time? Let's get our scriptures and check that out. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with a remnant of her seed. So the nations, the towns, and the cities, and the villages are cleared out. Which kept the commandments of God. All right. Moses, the law, and have the testimony, the law and Jesus Christ. Which a lot of people try to put on the church today. And that's not us. Those Jews in the tribulation period has to have the law and has to have Jesus Christ. How's that for salvation? And they know they're in trouble and they run. So when Jesus comes, they have they have an idea who he is. But lost people don't. Satan is going to keep them from that knowledge. So, Judges 5, 12, Awake, awake, Deborah, the mother of Israel, Revelation chapter 12. Like I said, we could stop on this one, but we're, we're doing chapter studies. But the tribulation period, as we go through the Bible, we will pick this up. And if you listen and get all these videos together, we've already gone to the Bible, six, the 66 books already once. We're doing it a second time. And as you follow along, and as we go through the books, as far as the Lord willing for us to go, you will get it all and put it all together. And it's wonderful. We were questioned today, why are we videotaping? So people around the world can get the gospel. It's not about me. It's about Jesus Christ and his word. I wanted to get out there. I want people to know. We are studying word by word. And like I said, I already told you one thing I told you. It could be me. And you don't have to believe it's me. So awake, verse 12. Awake, awake, 12. Verse 12, 12 Israel number. Awake. Utter a song. Utter a song. Arise, Barak, and lead the cat. Activity. Well, that's an interesting clause because let's go over to Job 42. 42 months, 42 chapters. Job is a type of Jew in the tribulation period. This one I got to find. Okay, Job 42, 10. Job 42, 10. 
there's another thing I want while you're doing there. I want to check out over here. Joe 4210. I'm checking out the here. Okay. Joe 4210. It says. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. And when he prayed for his friends, you know what the friends of the Jews are going to be? You visited me, I was in prison. You took care of me when I was sick. You gave me food when I was hungry. How's that? Matthew 27. So sing a song. Be happy. Um... Revelation 15, sing a song, Revelation 15. This may be wrong. Go ahead and mark. If not, I'll tell you the context. Let's see, Revelation 15. Oh. All right, 15, verse 3. Sing a song, Deborah. Watch this one. 15, 3. And they... Sing, sing the song of Moses, the servant of God. There's the law. And the song of the Lamb. There is the Jesus Christ. He came unto his own. He received, they received him not. But when he comes on his own the next time, there are going to be Jews are going to receive him. And when they break into singing, start waking up and singing. Deborah, Sing. Sing a song. I like to teach the Jews a song. Sing it about Jesus. Not Coca Cola. Jesus. They're going to sing a song about the Lamb. And they're going to sing a song about Mo Moses' song. And maybe they'll sing the song about Deborah and Burke. Now, wouldn't it be great if you were a Bible, if you study your Bible, you read your Bible, you you love the Lord with the Bible? Wouldn't it be great when this all happens in heaven? They and they start saying, "Praise ye the Lord for the vengeance in Israel." When the people will, you say, "Wait a minute, let's turn our Bibles to Judges and let's sing with them." How about that? How about when they break out with the Song of Moses and we get our, the Bible says heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. And maybe we just break open that Bible and we start singing these, these hymns, start singing these songs about God, about the nation of Israel. How about that? How about that? Wouldn't that be great? Utter a song, rise, Barak, and lead the captivity captive. Thou son of a Benjamin. Verse 13. Then he made him that remains have dominion over the nobles among the people. And the Lord made me to have dominion over the mighty. Look, the mighty are gone. Out of Ephraim was there a root of them against Amalek. That's the one that came up and tried to kill Israel while they're in their journeys. And thee, Benjamin, among thy people out of Marker came down governors, out of Zebulun, they that handled the pen of the writer. Uh -oh. Pen of the writer. Yeah, man wrote the Bible. It said the word came out of Zebulun, came out of Nephthali. They sat in great darkness, and then came the light. That began Jesus preaching. Repent for the kingdom of heaven, or, or I forget which one, is at hand. And it's recorded down, and if you have a red letter Bible, it's recorded in the red letters. Isn't the Bible great? And the princes of Issachar were with Deborah, even Issachar and also Barak. He was, I may pronounce his name different times. He was set on foot into the valley, into the valley of shallow of death. I will fear no evil. For the divisions of Reuben, there were great thoughts of heart. Why a boldest? First time that shows up. Thou among the sheepfolds. That's where you keep sheep. They don't run away. That's where you gather them together. To hear the bleedings. That's the first and last time that shows up. That's the sound of sheep. Of the flocks. 
Last time you heard bleeding in the Bible, Samuel walks up to Saul and says, Why do I hear the bleedings of the sheep, Saul? A little loud out here. Did you not kill Elimelech? Verse 14. Isn't that interesting? Bleedings and Elimelech show up in 1 Samuel that God told King Saul, you go and wipe them all out. But he spared the best of the sheep, the best of the ark. He saved Elimelech. And Samuel comes up, why do I hear bleedings? They're supposed to be dead. Well, I saved the best. Well, they saved the best. He blamed the people. For the divisions of Reuben, there were great searchings of the heart. Man, their heart is, what do we do? What's going on? What's happening? What's going on here? Who is that guy in the holy place? That's not God. Where are we supposed to go? What are we supposed to do? What's going on here? This is not what we were taught. Gilead, a bowl beyond Jordan. And why did Dan remain in shift? Now, Dan, you got to watch out. That's a. He's the first child of a proxy. There's another child born out of a proxy. That's also a, a, a vast character, Ishmael. Dan is in, he's a Navy, and his land is nowhere near. I don't believe water, I have to check. Asher continues on the seashore and abode in his breaches. That's the first time that word shows up. Zebulun and Nephtali were a people that jeopardized their lives. And this is where Jesus comes for his ministry. Unto death. They are slain and beheaded for the word of God's sake. In the high places of the field. High places is where they are worshiping false gods and they are dying. Are they going to these high places and witnessing the truth and dying for the word of God? You guys ought not to be here. Or are they caught worshiping other gods and dying? Either or. The kings came and fought. Well, didn't we see that in Revelation 19? The kings came in that world war. They fought the king of Cana in Tanak by the waters of Megiddo. Megiddo, Armageddon. Now 19 is historic, but yet 19 is yet future. They took no gain of money. They weren't paid. They fought from heaven. <laughs> Who's that? That's us. The stars in their courses. That's the first time that shows up. Courses. Fought against Sisera. So Sisera is a type of Antichrist. Jesus Christ coming with his army behind him. You imagine a Christian say, well, I don't want to fight. I don't think we should fight. Yeah, that's what, comes, that's what you do when you come back. That's why God gave his armor to fight today. The river of Kaisha and swept them away. That ancient river. The river of Kaisha. And yet Satan gathers a mouthful of water and tries to destroy Israel. Maybe he gets the wrong people. <laughs> oh my soul, thou hast trodden down strength. Then were the, hoof, the horse hoofs broken by means of the prancing. And the prances of their strength. The mighty one, excuse me. Curse ye Meros, that's a city, said the angel of the Lord. Curse ye bitterly, that's the first time bitterly shows up. The inhabitants thereof, because they came not to help of the Lord. Oh, they didn't help God, they didn't help the Israelites. They helped the Lord against the mighty. So for not helping the Jews, this city is cursed. Cursed be then that curseth you. Now 24, we got to go off and attack somebody again. We're just going to read the Bible. Blessed above women shall Jael, that's chapter 4, she killed a man. She took a nail and purposely went through both his temples and nailed him flat. We talked about that the other night. Thou shalt not kill. Blessed above women shall Jael the wife of Heber. Did, did you get that? Blessed above women shall Jael the wife of Heber the Kenite. Moses' family. Blessed shall she be above women in the tent. 
All right, let's read this again, verse 24. Blessed above women. Be above women. We say, well, what's so bad about that? Let's take our Bibles to Luke 1, 42. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verse 42. Because now we're going to hit a religion again. Jehu is blessed above women. Get that. Probably changed in modern Bibles. Luke chapter 1, verse 42. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb. So if you want a woman in the Bible that is purely blessed above all women, Mary's not the one. Jael is the one. And then you will say, thou shalt not kill even though your church kills. She took a man and she killed him with a nail right through his temples. Do you know the Antichrist is going to get a wound in his temple? He's going to get a bad arm? He's going to die? And we've been studying the second advent of Jesus Christ, the tribulation period. And above the, all the women is this woman that kills an enemy of Israel. You got the wrong woman. They say, Don't they say the Blessed Virgin Mary? Well, she's among, Jehu is above, risen above. So... And says of in the tent. She's where she was supposed to be. She's not a warrior. She was in her tent doing her tently duties, and the guy gave us said, give me some water. She gave him a milk, he put him to sleep, and then killed him. And God says, That woman's blessed. Thou shalt not kill. <laughs> Isn't God great? You got people out there who don't know what the Bible says, will tell you what the Bible says, and they don't know what the Bible says when you study the Bible and see what it really says. Now watch, verse 25. He asked for water. And she gave him milk. She brought forth butter in a lordly dish. There's the first time dish shows up. So what did she give him? She gave him buttermilk. She gave him milk and brought forth butter. Buttermilk. But milk goes for, it should be called milk butter, according to the Bible. She put her hand to the nail and her right hand to the worker, worker, workman's hammer. And with the hammer, she smoked Sisera. She smoked off his head. That woman did it so hard, she beheaded him. We didn't learn that in verse 4. When she had pierced and stricken through his temples. That woman had some strength. <laughs> At her feet he bowed. Isn't that a picture of Samson? When he bowed at Delilah's. When they came in and shaved his hair. He fell. He lay down. At her feet he bowed. He fell. Where he bowed, there he fell down dead. Now watch this. We're going to go now to the palace of Sisera. We're going to look at his mother. The mother of Sisera looked out, looked out at a window and cried through the lattice. Why is his chariot so long coming? Why tarry the wheels of his chariots? Why is he back? Her wise lady's answer is, yay. She returned answer to herself. She's answering herself. Talking to herself. It's Bible. Have they not sped? And I have no speed. Have they not divided the prey? They got to take time in, in the looting. This is yours. Did they not divide the, the clothes of Jesus? To every man a damsel or two, the women they captured. To Cesare, a prey of diverse colors, almost like Joseph's coat. 
a prey of diverse colors of needlework, uh, uh, what do you call it? cloth, of diverse colors of needlework on both sides, Ooh, not just one side, both sides, meat for the necks of them that take the spoil, rich fancy clothes. So let all thy enemies perish, O Lord, second advent. The goat nations, O Lord. There's a woman in Revelation called the mother of harlots. I wonder if that's her right there, verse 30. Where is my men? Where is my captain? Where is my king? Dead. But let them that love him be as the sun, bright, shining, when he goeth forth in his might across the sky, where they get Apollo and all that, and the land had rest 40 years. Well, the land gets rest with Jesus a thousand years. What a remarkable story. What a remarkable history. What a remarkable prophecy. And yet to come. The Bible is so great. Can't imagine what modern Bibles do that.